again today at the, at, at the contact group meeting by my good friend Alexei Reznikov, Ukraine's Minister of Defense, and by Deputy Chief of Defense Lieutenant General Moyshuk. I spoke with General Reznikov by phone before this morning's contact group meeting about yesterday's explosion in Poland. And we'll remain in close consultation as we move forward. Ukraine's commanders have shown tremendous leadership and tenacity. And they updated the contact group this morning on the current battlefield dynamics and on Ukraine's most urgent self-defense needs. Ukraine's troops continue to consolidate their gains on the battlefield as they, as they head into the winter. And the contact group continues to push hard to bolster, to bolster Ukraine's air defenses in the face of Russia's ongoing barrages. I'm pleased to be able to report that the NASAM's air defense systems that we've sent to Ukraine are now operational. And their performance so far has been very impressive. The NASAM systems had a 100% success rate in intercepting Russian missiles as the Kremlin continues its ruthless bombardment of Ukraine, including yesterday's attacks. We're also working to secure more critical equipment to protect and repair Ukraine's energy infrastructure after Russia's indefensible attacks. We also heard an important update from General Kovoli, our Supreme Allied Commander in Europe. I'm confident that the training efforts spearheaded by the United States and many other members of this contact group will equip the Ukrainian, Ukrainian armed forces with the skills that they need to consolidate their gains and to seize new opportunities on the battlefield. I'd also like to acknowledge the European Union's important efforts here. The EU's training program across Europe will do a great deal to reinforce what other countries are doing bilaterally. I'd also like to recognize Germany and Poland for their leadership in this larger mission. And let me thank the UK for pledging to train another 19,000 Ukrainian troops next year. The contact group also discussed important industrial-based initiatives to sustain our security assistance to Ukraine. Let me also thank the department's acquisition and sustainment team, as well as the co-host of the National Armaments Directors, a working group under the, the contact group auspices. Now, all of these initiatives help prepare the Ukrainians to consolidate their gains during the winter and to prepare to seize new initiatives in the spring. And you can see uh, this contact group's ongoing unity and commitment in some of the announcements that its members make. I'd like to thank Sweden for coming forward today with a substantial $287 million package of assistance to Ukraine. This package includes key capabilities, including an air defense system that will bolster Ukraine's ability to defend itself against Russia's ongoing ruthless attacks. And Spain has promised to send two more Hawk uh, launchers and missiles. And Canada is stepping up with its largest, with its latest tranche of $500 million in assistance. And Canada remains one of the lead donors of winter gear. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin at the Pentagon. Germany has advanced much-needed donations of air defense, artillery, and MRS ammunition. And Greece also announced an important donation of 155 millimeter ammunition. And Poland has committed additional artillery and tank ammunition, as well as short-range air defense capabilities. And so these contributions will make a real difference. And so does the coordination of our security assistance that this contact group makes possible. So we, we will continue to deepen our work together. And the contact group has met seven times this year. And each meeting has produced tangible results that help Ukraine defend itself and its citizens. And you can see that progress in Ukraine's victories in Kharkiv and Kyrgyzstan. Over the weekend, the world saw Ukrainian forces liberate Kyrgyzstan, demonstrating once again the determination of the Ukrainian people to live free in their own country. Now, our resolve is only strengthened by Russia's indefensible attacks on civilian targets. And we'll continue to stand together in common purpose because no member of this contact group wants to live in a world where big countries bulldoze their peaceful neighbors. And we won't just accept Putin's imperial aggression and erosion of international norms 
as some kind of new normal. Instead, we will continue to stand up for Ukraine's inalienable rights to defend itself. We'll continue to strengthen our unity and resolve. We'll continue to show the power of partnership. And we'll continue to bolster Ukraine's armed forces by rushing them the capabilities that they need to defend their country. And we will continue to help the people of Ukraine in their fight for freedom. Thank you very much, and I'll turn it over to General Milley for his opening comments. Thank you, uh, Secretary Austin. I appreciate that, and I appreciate uh, your leadership uh, as we gathered today, this morning, uh, for the seventh consecutive uh, convening of the Ukrainian Contact Group, which we've been doing every month, as you know. And thanks also to all the ministers of defense out there who participated, and all of my counterparts, all the charts that participated, and other senior representatives uh, from almost 50 countries uh, showed up. Uh, at this meeting this morning and continue to take part uh, in these discussions which are very, very productive. Uh, the mission of the group uh, remains clear uh, to support Ukraine as they come.